So, uh, while I was waiting for the parts to arrive for this H8 RAM card, I shot a bunch of Apple II video. Uh, I've got the Apple II hardware removed off the bench again, and we're back uh, to this H8 RAM card. My DigiKey shipment has arrived. Uh, I, in the last video, I was missing the 640 here. I see. I also went ahead and ordered the low-power SRAM, the diodes, the correct battery holder. This battery holder fits, but it's not... It's kind of crooked to me. It's kind of weird. Uh, sorry, it was only two dollars, I think. So I ordered the battery holder that was specified in the bomb. Uh, I think a couple of things that were missing. Anyhow, I think I've uh, ordered all the parts that were missing. They should be in the little box here. So I thought we'd go ahead and open the box up. Of course, this assumes I can find something to uh, open the box with. Where the heck's the Exacto blade? Ah, uh, I tell myself that clutter is the sign of a brilliant mind. We all know better than that. But, anyhow, this is an awfully big box for a small amount of stuff I ordered. I think I spent about $15 plus 3 or $4 shipping. So it's a lot of box for not very much stuff. But, it is what it is. DigiKey always packages stuff really well. Nice little bag, that should really be it. I'll get the box out of the way. And just take a look at what I ordered. Oh, it's a nice anti-static or static dissipative bag. So there's the battery holder that I'm hoping actually sits a little more flush to the card, although it looks nearly identical to the one I use, not quite. There's three. No, it's very similar, if not identical, to the one I have in here. I'll have to take a look. These look like they're probably the... Oh, these are the uh, one watt. So there's the one watt. I expected it to be bigger than that. That's interesting. Is that really a 1 watt resistor? Resistor 100 ohm, 1 watt. That seems a little small to me to be a 1 watt resistor, but I could be wrong. Here is the uh, inverting transceiver IC, the uh, 640, I believe it is, or 660, uh, 640E. They were a little spendy, I think three dollars and something each. There were two. Uh, see, they were a little spendy. I don't see on the sheet there the actual cost. This is the power supply monitor. I just ordered these were cheap. I ordered a number of them. I can just add some to my stock. So it's the a power supply monitor that's got to do with the switching. I went ahead and got two of the low power SRAMs. These were less, I think, than the uh, 640 chips. Uh, went ahead and got two. I, you know, the SRAM chips that I've got, I think the majority of them would have worked. But uh, that's the right part, and it's a low power part, which means that I can actually use the battery backup and, of course, the diodes. Uh, after thinking about this more, I realized that having the SRAM battery backed up meant that when I power, of course, the H8 back up, whatever I had in memory is still there, uh, which is a really nice feature. So I think with that said, what I'm going to do is, I think, I haven't really thought about the order I want to do this. I think I'm going to add the buffer, put in the proper RAM chip. Uh, right now, I've got a jumper link on, up here on this one diode that in the schematic will just hook VCC directly to the uh, power pin on the SRAM chip. So, of course, the battery backup circuit won't be there. Excuse me. But we should be able to test in that state. Uh, I'm debating whether to attempt to s or swap out that uh, battery holder since I've got the soldering gun heated up just to see if it fits a little bit better. I just don't like 
you know, it's really not going to, looking at that. Uh, this has got a very similar footprint. There's three little pins underneath it that stand it up off the board. It's really size-wise. Oh, wait, that one's broke. I didn't notice that that battery clip, is that actually broke? That may, uh, right there, dictate that we're going to replace it. I would. That was a new part. No, I guess it's not broke. It's just got a spot to get a fingernail up underneath. Well, for now, I think I'm going to just leave it the way it is. Right now, it doesn't matter. Uh, so we need the... One of these guys here. This is, of course, that 640 buffer. The inverting buffer. Of course, I can't read that without swapping glasses, and you just saw me set them down. Well, as, long as I take off one pair of glasses, and I can't see that 640E, I use the uh, part numbers from the bomb, the DigiKey part numbers from the bomb to order the parts. The uh, only bad one I found, part number wise, is the part number for the one watt resistor wasn't there. I'm really struggling with those being one watt resistors. That's kind of disappointing. Yeah, we'll come back around to that. <coughs> Excuse me. Those just don't look big enough to be physically one watt. Those look like quarter watt resistors to me. They're really no different in size to the ones that I have in the board, even though 100 ohm, 1 watt. Uh, I've never had DigiKey screw something up before, but there's always a first time for everything. Um, let's walk the SRAM I put in here up and out. And get up underneath him. There we go. He is removed. We're going to sub him. Actual part number. Part of me feels like I actually need to go look the data sheet up for this part just to make sure it'll operate at 5 volts uh, when it's operating off the regulated power supply it's still got a diode drop through this diode so the voltage is going to be a little bit less than 5 uh, you know as much as 7 tenths of a volt drop across that diode I don't think those are germanium which should give you a 0.3 volt or so drop. Diode shot key 40 volt 1 amp. Yeah there's nothing I think special about those. IN 5819 I don't know maybe the G on the end means germanium I have no idea. Let's uh, bend his leads in a little bit. Let's see if I can get him into the socket. to notch, 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 to notch. So, uh, I think early in one of the earlier videos we mentioned that the SRAM orientation is 180 degrees from the logic. 
always want to double and triple check. So the logic all looks to be inserted correctly. I had determined only these two jumpers needed to be on for this to work. We've disabled org zero. Uh, I don't remember what the other jumper did. We've just got a jumper link in to power the device. I guess honestly I could pull that jumper leak out and just go ahead and drop a diode in there and call it good because that will eventually be the configuration. Let's just go ahead and do that. This is going to show up in the video. Get a hold of the lead just so I can gently do that. Just pull it up. I, I cut the jumper link in half and bent the ends up so I could just heat it and pull the leads out. And then I can go ahead and flip the board over and unsolder those. Or or solder back out the holes like so like so oops the soldering tool needs to be cleaned it's leaving a little bit of nasty behind well it's just little bits of solder caught in the flux because I haven't cleaned the board yet and I guess since we're doing it, let's swap out the battery connector. Why not? Mm. Oh, it's pulling vacuum. I did that not. We'll set that aside and swap in the one from the bomb. This has got a much better clip for holding the battery in place. This one actually creates a mechanical switch that when there's no battery the two contacts here are connected together that's something I noticed looking where in this one they don't do that and that might actually this might actually have caused an issue with uh, jumpering something directly to ground he it's gonna sit in there like that something to try to hold him in place. We'll solder up one lead, square it out, I'm trying to get the lead somewhat centered in the holes. I'm sure I've got this off camera. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That didn't work. We'll try it again. We'll try to be actually on camera. Again, I want the leads kind of centered in the holes, just so he's a little straighter. Is it flush. pressure on this side once I get the solder in place. Without of course burning myself. Okay, it's flush on the board. We've got 
the one diode we put in. We will retrieve a diode. And of course, it's a bag in a bag. I'm actually amazed that they can make a profit with you know the the bags and bags and the cardboard box and you know everything involved there and looks like for spacing I want point four again. white band on the diode is indicated. That dropped in and just looks beautiful there. It's a perfect fit. Again, the lead forming tool really helps. Makes for a much nicer looking build. Saw the part shift slightly there, but it looks fine. I think you've kind of figured out that I actually care maybe too much about how things physically look. It's unclear to me whether I need to heat sink this regulator or not. All keep track of how warm it is. Why do I feel like I have that battery socket in upside down? feel like I have it in upside or backwards flipped around 180 from where it's supposed to be just because it's not lining up well to the silk screen so of course the question here becomes what did I do with the uh, assembly documentation for it for a power on test it won't matter there's no battery in it but I will definitely want to look at the uh, Assembly notes before I go applying the battery. It doesn't line up well with the silk screen, That's, which is why I'm questioning it. I don't know if I actually put a little assembly manual in the three ring binder here. I put all my. Yeah, I did. So. This many projects going on, organization becomes important. So there, oh, I hope that I hope that lead hasn't been hanging in the camera shot the whole time. If it has, I apologize. Oh, they're just soldering the battery directly in. And of course, I have not ordered an LIR uh, 2032. DigiKey didn't have it yet, so. Why did I think I could use a battery holder there? That's actually got me confused. And of course, the silk screen makes much more sense. Well, I will come back and figure that out later. For some reason, I was thinking this LIR went into one of these. Same time, that is the battery holder. that uh, was in the bomb. So I think you can put a non-rechargeable in and you don't put the bat jumper on for non-rechargeable. But I'm going to have to order one of these. So didn't pay enough attention. So got to feel a little better about that. I will definitely make sure orientation is correct. You know, plus to the string diodes, negative to ground.
before I uh, attempt to put a battery in it. Now the question becomes, should I go ahead and just while we're here in this video solder up the remaining parts? Uh, it should just power up. You know, I think it's functional at this point, although I guess we could put in the little reset. I think that's a reset. That, that voltage trigger, I think, is used to generate reset. I just don't remember now. Uh, I think I'll pause the video here and give this some more thought. So, I'll be back. So, I want to move on to testing where we are with the card. Uh, the diode here should provide power to the uh, SRAM. So, the card should be able to be installed and hopefully work. I've got the uh, H816 card in here. It is strapped to be from address uh, 8K through 24K. And then, this card is strapped to go from 24K to 64K. So with the two switches here up, right there, th this card will supply the memory there. The idea is first to just test the system as it stands, and we can go and do a register stack pointer and see that the stack pointer is set correct. It's at the top of the, the 24K address space. The next test then is going to be to put this card in, and we will... Uh, Powered up together and see what happens. Hopefully there won't be smoke and fire. There shouldn't be. We've been pretty thorough with the testing. And I think I just screwed up. And I did. I didn't check close enough. Hopefully I didn't damage anything. I was off by one pin. And as soon as I hit the power switch, I could see it. I don't know why it's harder to get these cards in and out on camera. I guess it's because of the reach. That now looks correct. Please. Okay, that's better. Uh, let me shift the camera up a little bit here. Hopefully. I don't know if you can see it, but the power LED is on. So the next test is immediately, let's look at the register stack pointer, and it should be, well, 377377, and the stack pointer is 377377. So that is the top address the system's capable of the top of the 64k address space so that says to me the monitor saw that card it set the stack pointer to the absolute top of memory so that's a really good sign that says to me this card as we have it configured is working now whether it's working well you, you know doesn't have memory errors and stuff only some long-term testing will tell but the next thing i want to do now getting with the power off is pull that RAM card out. Get this card out. One of the things that I was supposed to have done was was fill this gap here on the card so I couldn't put it in incorrectly. I haven't actually done that step so when I had it a pin off I actually had a pin poking in there. So we want to turn on now the RAM and the address space from 8K through 24K which is what this card was occupying. And we should be able now to put him in correctly. If I can get him to line up. Okay, that felt funky. Let me take a look down inside and just make sure. No, it looks good. And if we again look at the stack pointer, we see it. So that says to me we've got that card working from beginning at 8K all the way to the end of 64K. So, you know, the basics of that card are there. So the next step is to enter the memory test. And I gotta remember here how to set the top of RAM. This actually the memory test that doesn't look right. Let's see if I can find printed out copy of the memory test. I've got several floating around. Some of this paperwork hasn't made it into the three ring binder yet. Uh, 
that's actually not the manual I want. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll dig up the instructions and I'll be back. So I've got the little manual here. We, we worked out of this before. And what I want to do is actually enter the memory test. And that is across these two pages. Uh, actually a little bit less. Yeah, see, this is kind of laid out really ugly in here because you have to start here and work your way up. So I'm going to go ahead and off camera enter the memory test. You've seen me do it enough times. So I've gone ahead and keyed in the memory test. You may be curious why I didn't load it from cassette. Well, it's a stupid answer. I uh, left the play button down on the cassette recorder and the batteries ran completely dead and I don't have a fresh set of C batteries to put in it. So we're kind of trapped back here on the keyboard. So currently the memory test is keyed in, is only uh, keyed in to test the first 8K. I just want to make sure it runs. So what we want to do here is do register PC zero Alder 040100. We want to monitor the BC and we should be able to do a go now. Can never spot the go key. There it is. And we see it testing memory. So I'm going to uh, reset it. Register PC Alder 040100. Actually, this isn't what I wanted to do. Uh, I want to go to memory 040 and let me get the right byte here 10345 105 and we should see a 077 there is the 8k test I'm going to change this byte to be 377 and that should test us all the way to the top of the 64k address space it'll test through address 377 260 and that leaves room above uh, 260 to 377 in that lower byte for the stack in the system. So we want to alter this and then put 377. Go back and look. And we should have, I mean, just to make sure, we should have 041, 160, 040, 021, 260, and 057. So that looks good. That should test to the top of 64K. I'm assuming the memory test routine will actually function correctly doing that. I don't honestly know. Let's go into the register PC. It's already set to the correct address. Register BC to monitor. And let's run and see what happens. Uh, this will take significantly longer to run here. Ah, nice. So you can see how slow it is running because it's actually testing from uh, just above where we enter the program in, in the 8K space all the way to the top of the 64K stay space minus the uh, stack area up there. So I'm just going to let this run for a while. Uh, when, I'm, when it's got through a full couple of passes, I will we'll pull the card out. We will put the rest of the components in uh, and test again. So. Uh, I'll be back shortly. So we've been up and running for quite some time. I don't know how many passes through the memory test it's made, but it's a fair number. Haven't had a failure, so you know it's a really good sign. This is only a one megahertz 8080. If I, you know, it's definitely an 8080. If I remember correctly, at one megahertz. So we're not doing any kind of high speed RAM access here at all. But in this configuration, it looks pretty solid. So I think the next step. It's going to be to remove the card, uh, get the rest of the components soldered in, and see if I can get uh, some battery backup to at least uh, hold the memory content. So we'll move on to that next.